Hi everyone, my name is Majamulua Oluwodola. I'm currently I lead the product team at Chaka Technologies. Chaka is a platform that powers borderless investments for Africans. Um, we have a range of products from um, ranging from our stock trading platform to Chaka for Business. Um, we have SDKs and APIs available to um, fintechs and other traditional stock brokers. And um, of course, our recently launched product, Smart Invest. Um, so Smart Invest is a platform that provides access to um, specially curated um, assets across different asset classes. So when I talk about assets, I mean stocks, ETFs, bonds, um, real estate assets and all. Um, so we have um, a specially curated portfolios um, created by financial experts, by finance experts. And um, so Smart Invest is actually that product for um, this category of users who really don't have so much insight or so much knowledge into the stock market. They really want to invest, they really want to grow wealth, but they don't know what exactly to invest in, what exactly to put their money in. So um, with Smart Invest, we take that ad work off your shoulders. We do the ad work of creating a um, portfolio for you. So all you need to do is come on board and just fund and your fund gets invested. And then you can with, um, monitor the growth of your portfolio. So um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, they're just putting it out there. And um, I hope you enjoy this talk. So today, my talk has been titled, You've Launched Your MPP. What's Now? Yeah, so it all starts with an idea, right? So um, all of the successful products, and even the not so successful ones, always start with an idea. So you have an idea of a product you want to build. Um, it could come from an individual, it could come from a group of people. I just come from everywhere. But then, do you just stop at it being an idea? You know, you need to move to the next, you need to bring that idea to life. So um, you have an idea of a product you want to build. Now, what's next? How do you bring that idea to life? Um, so at Chaka, I'm just talking, just to give a little bit of background. So throughout this talk, I'll be running through... Um, how we built and how we launched our MVP Smart Invest that I talked about. And um, basically just sharing how the entire process we went through, um, what worked, what didn't work, what were the lessons we learned um, in the process, right? So um, that's what this talk is. So it's more practical and less of um, me sharing a lot of theoretical knowledge, but I'm, which I'm sure we already know a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so... Um, at Chaka, so when the idea of, you know, I talked about how our traditional app, um, it, we were able to say that oh, the people that really enjoyed using it were more of experienced traders, people that have an idea of the stock market, they know what to invest in, they know they could understand market trends and all. So, but we saw that there's still this um, vast market of people who really want to invest. They really want to grow wealth, but they don't know what to. So that was when the idea of um, Smart Invest came to life. And um, of course, we knew to be able to bring that to reality, we needed to build, to launch fast, to be able to like bring that idea to reality. So we um, had to release our MVP first. And um, I'm sure we all know what an MVP is, but just for the sake of people that might watch this and don't know what an MVP is. So, um, that's your minimum viable product is a basic launchable version of the product that supports minimal yet must have features which define its value proposition. So in um, simple terms, your MVP consists of those features that like the basic or the least amount of features that you can put out there and would actually give the value your product is supposed to give to users, right? So. Um, the, well, that's one of the mistakes a lot of startups make. Um, you're trying to build something and you really want to build all of the features, all of the ideas you guys have. And you end up, you see that you're probably building for like one year, two years, three years, and it's almost looking like an unending cycle. So that's where um, an MVP is really important. So you build fast and you're able to launch um, quickly. So um, one of the reasons why MVPs are really important is first of all, it helps in validating the idea. Right, so um, you, the reality is the idea we had or the idea you might have of the product you want to build is really just an assumption. It's really you just assuming that, oh, users really have this problem. Users really think um, your product would actually solve this problem. And um, 
but there are times and cases where you might actually be wrong. So fine, users might actually have that problem, but probably the direction in which you're thinking about solving it might not be the best one. So if you spend too much um, time, channel a lot of energy in trying to do something big, you might end up saying, oh, you would probably have to like start from the scratch or say that, oh, it's not really something that users need. So um, an MVP enables early testing of the idea with um, actual users to check whether the product is able to solve their problems um, efficiently. Then um, also quick launch. You know, I talked about how we really wanted to go to market fast. First off, to be able to validate the idea, right? Then also um, to be able to hit the market fast, right? Um, and especially if you are building something new in a novel sector, probably you have a novel idea, you launching fast gives you that um, first mover advantage, right? You're pretty much almost like the first person to hit the market with that product. So um, an MVP is created an intent to enable faster time to market, um, attract early adopters, and achieve product market fit from early on. So I'll still talk about um, some of these other things later on and share our experiences later on. And then your initial customers. So those first set of users that get to use your product, that get to test your product, that are available to give you feedback. And um, so launching an MVP, it helps you get the first set of users to use and interact with your product and see if they actually get value out of the product. So this is just like a brief intro of what an MVP is and why um, launching first with an MVP is really important. So um, on this slide, I have um, the steps that it takes in building and launching your MVP. So I um, got this image online, which pretty much was just in line with um, the steps that we took in um, launching our MVP. So first, it started with um, market research. So I talked about how from data, from feedback from customers, we were able to think that, oh, OK, there is this need for customers for um, an opportunity to be able to invest in um, assets that are chosen by experts, where they don't really need to like think so much about this. And um, one thing, what we did first um, with our market research is we started with a survey. So even though we already have like this background knowledge that, oh, users actually want this, users actually need this, but just to be sure we're on the right track, we um, started with a survey, we rolled out a survey, um, and basically just questions that helps to see if users actually see um, that they have this problem that we want to solve. And if users are actually thinking in the line of um, the kind of solution we're trying to um, provide, if that's actually in line with what users actually think can solve um, the problem. So from there, we were able to like get feedback from data. We were able to say, oh, yeah, we're on the right track. Users actually, they actually um, users like a vast number, a large number of users who actually um, have this problem of not knowing what to invest in. They really want to grow wealth, they really want a platform where they don't really need to do the heavy thinking, but just fund and just watch their money grow, right? So that was how we were able to conduct the market research first. Then the next thing was to um, ideate on value addition. So pretty much important questions were like, oh, okay, so what, and which is actually very important that from early on, you preferably even have it documented. So what problem exactly are you um, trying to solve? Um, what value are you bringing to customers? And so because here you probably have like a lot of ways, because there are probably a lot of ways to actually solve this problem for customers, right? So it's you just to like, okay, this is how we want to solve this problem. This is the, this is our value proposition. Probably even your unique selling point. Um, this is why we think we should be able to stand out in the market and also pretty much just idea, um, think through, refine the idea, um, basically refine the idea, think through. Um, I'm, I'm actually a heavy, I'm very big on documentation. Like it's really important, right? So beyond um, the idea being stuck up in everybody's head, so just to be sure we're all on the same page across the same, everybody built it. So I find documentation to be really, really important. Right, so just document document the um, idea. So even from the from that early stage, you can really start writing out the requirements, documentation, specifications, and all of those, so that 
um, there's like a central place where everybody has like, okay, this is like the central place that describes what we're building and um, what problem and how we want to solve it for customers. So the next step is to map out um, user flow. So how is, this is pretty much more like the design pattern and design system. How, how is the user's experience going to be on the product, right? So um, where does it start from? Where does the user journey start? So pretty much mapping out the user journey. So for us, it was, and especially for the MVP, we wanted to make it as simple as possible. So the user flow was straightforward. So you just um, come on board. So for us to be able to determine the kind of investor you are or your risk appetite and all, you go through um, like a profiling questionnaire. So come sign up, go through the profiling questionnaire. Then from there, you are assigned a portfolio category. So it could be um, conservative, it could be growth. So depending on your kind of um, investor based on your responses from the um, questionnaire. So um, we assign a portfolio to you. And from there, all you just need to do is to just fund and immediately your funds get invested in the assets that are ready, like in the portfolio, because the portfolio are already been designed by expander. So it was straightforward, come on board, go through the um, profiling questionnaire, fund and your funds get invested. So the, um, we made sure the user flow was as clear and simple as that, so that everybody and anybody knows, okay, this is what the user journey looks like on the platform. Then next was to prioritize MVP features. Remember I said like your MVP features has to be as minimal as possible. I know there's always that temptation in production that oh, we can actually just squeeze in this feature. Like, oh, it won't hurt if we add this two extra feature. We feel like it will make the product extra cool. And also, but as much as possible, just try to like make it as minimal as possible. Then also um, prioritize, right? So if for any reason you need to like add or remove from it, based on the priority level. Um, and it also helps, especially if um, developers and engineers would have to work on it, they know this is like the top priority, this and this are what we want to um, knock off first, right? Then um, of course, after prioritizing, definitely you build, and that's if you are building, and then you launch your MVP, right? So um, after launch, um, you exercise the build. So the last step here from this chart that we have here is to exercise the build, measure, and learn. So um, after launch, of course, you most likely will not want to stop there. You're not stopping there. You want to start building, start improving on um, the MVP that has been launched. Then measure, right? Measure, um, you have key metrics that has been set in place that you want to measure. Then, of course, learn, because you'll be getting a lot of feedback from customers. So this in all is just like a brief summary on how to like build and launch your MVP. So one um, really important concept that I would really love to talk about is um, exploring no code MVP. So one thing I did mention is um, in launching our MVP, we literally didn't write any code, even though of course we have a team of developers, we have a team of engineers and all, but we just thought it was more effective and because we wanted to launch faster and to help us validate the idea on time, it made more sense to explore um, launching with a no-code MVP. So remember when I described the user flow, right? So it starts with um, users just taking, of course, sign up with no. So it just starts, the actual flow starts with you um, taking the profiling questionnaire, then you fund and immediately your funds get invested. And of course, after it gets invested, you get to see your performance, your portfolio performance, how your um, assets are performing, you see graphs and charts and all of those, explaining your performance. So it was, since the user flow is quite simple, we saw that, okay, there are no code tools that we could actually um, adopt to help us achieve this faster. So first for the um, investor profiling, Okay, so first thing is we already like um, sent out mails. So because for us, we already have like an existing user base. So we sent out mails and not just on our, not just to our existing users. So even on um, social media, on um, our Telegram community and all of those. So we sent out um, a waitlist form, right? Which was just for the 
type form where we just needed to provide your email address. So that was even before we launched the MVP. So, and from the waitlist, because we've got a, and okay, so the waitlist was after um, the initial survey we sent out when we took, uh, when we did the market research. So if you remember the steps that I described, the first step was the market research. So we had a survey there and um, we also like set out a form for you to provide your email address so you'll be added to the wait list. And then, so since we already had like a lot of people that showed interest already, so what we did was we just set up on type form, the profiling um, questionnaire set up on type form and sent it out to um, guys, in, to the to people that have shown interest and already signed up for the wait list. And um, from there, after filling it, so because from the responses we get from type form, from type form, we could attach numbers that we could use to just calculate to um, understand the kind of investor you are and assign a portfolio to you, right? So after filling um, the type form, the profiling questionnaire on type form, you get an email, right? Telling you your kind of portfolio, the portfolio that's been assigned to you and how you can fund. So here in Nigeria, we have what we call virtual new banks. So we have providers that give you like um, bank accounts, right? So that's why a lot of fintechs use. So you have bank accounts that all you just need to do is to make a money transfer to, right? And it automatically funds your wallet on the fintech platform. So that was what we used because it was straightforward. We don't need you to start entering card details and all of those things. We don't actually have an actual product yet. So we just sent the bank account details, which is unique to each individual, right? So all you just need to do to fund is to send, which is, so the instruction is already on the email, so you just need to make a money transfer to the bank account details. And then of course, your wallet is funded and automatically we're able to like invest it, right? So it was straightforward, we didn't really, so, and um, one impressive thing for us, which also, because, and I talked about how um, the MVP is really important in validating your idea was the numbers, the first of from the wait list, then people that spilled the um, investor profiling, then people that were also like bold enough to like fund, even without saying an actual product. That was one of the things that gave us the reassurance that, oh, okay, we're on the right track, right? So um, the essence of my spam one is um, it's important that we could actually explore um, no code MVP. So you don't always have to like build, gather the entire design team, gather the entire um, and, um, product team, your engineers, get everybody to build and all. So, um, and one of some of the importance of um, using a no code MVP is it costs less money, um, time, and energy to build, right? Really, how what does it take to set up a form or um, type form? Really takes no time. And, um, and the good thing is because even along that process, so initially we had this idea, like, these are the questions that we think. You can ask users, but from seeing how users engage with them, so okay, it looks like the way the questions are phrased, users don't really understand properly. So it's very easy to just change things and tweak things and rework. So even with the calculation that we're using to assign portfolio, we had to change at some point, basically from just seeing how users interact with them with the MVP. And of course, the no-code MVP is more flexible and it's way faster to market. And um. So two exa excellent examples of no-code MVPs are Dropbox and Buffer. So if you read um, the story of um, Dropbox and Buffer, how they launched. So for Dropbox, what um, they did was just a, it was simply just a video with, that was just showing how the product works. That was their MVP, just a video showing how the product works. And for Buffer, they just made a two-page um, landing page, right? And that, that was it. So we can, so it's really, and of course, now there are a lot of tools that you can use to set up um, landing pages and those, right? So, but this is just me just imploring. And if you have the opportunity or if you can go that route, it's usually um, faster, more flexible, and easier to launch. So now that you've launched your MVP, um, what's next? So, first off, is um, promoting your MVP. Right, so you don't just want to launch and it's just somewhere in the shelf and nobody knows, you, you can't even like, nobody knows they need to actually use it, right? So um, just having a good product doesn't mean users automatically sign up to use it if no one knows about it. So um, promoting your MVP really needs to have a strategic plan 
that's unique to your business product and market so i mean different um strokes for different folk what works for this team might not necessarily work for your team so for us um, it was actually somewhat easier because we um so for the mvp we already got a lot of people that signed up for the week so it was us just going back to them like yay we already have a product but it's not an actual product but here is something you can use to um that you can use to just test the product and all so um that was really our major plan of um promoting the mvp then of course the existing chaka users also we also made nice to them and um got enough people to come on board then um hopefully we'll be following to your mvp you validated your idea with a test market audience so this audience could be some of your first beta users so you could also um, explore the option of having like a group of um beta users people that will just test your um product so if you don't really want to like put word out there or really put it out there you can actually have like a focus group of um first set of users to just test in the beta phase um Okay, so next thing is on measuring um, success, right? So because, like I mentioned, the idea, the initial idea is really just an assumption. So now that you've built, you've launched your MVP, how do you determine, like, what makes you think, oh, okay, like, how do you determine that you're successful, the MVP is successful, it's a good idea, the idea has been validated, validated and now it's now a good time to actually start putting in all of the energy to actually building the full-fledged um, product so um it's really important first of yeah you could have like the qualitative measures so um you can get narrative or descriptive feedback through surveys questionnaires or interviews so for us we rolled out a lot of surveys like i'm sure you that is like come on but the way we um, made it fun it was almost like they were building with us right so that was the exciting part and that was why we were able to get users to really be excited to give feedback and all so it was more like uh okay they really need our idea our input is really needed in building this and all right so i'll really be excited to give my honest feedback and also um you can explore using surveys questionnaires or even interviews so because even for like, our designers by the time we're building the actual product we actually had to have, have one-on-one especially for guys that have been like repeating like repetitive fun that people that have been using just using the um, no code MVP. I'm so okay. These people actually look at people that are really interested in it. So we had one on one interviews just to get ideas and all. So, yeah, that's one of the ways by which you can uh, measure success. So, from feedback, you can see if, oh, okay, you're yeah, actually users are actually getting value from this or not. Then, also, um, quantitative measures. So, you should track um, numerical data. I mean, data is king, numbers don't lie. <laughs> So um to determine so you need to track um data to determine whether your customers found value in your MVP. So um you can set of course KPI is your key performance um index or indicators, right? So um it could be for you, it could be the number of downloads, it could be number of sign-ups. So for us it was more of um first of number of people that completed the profiling then from there, because we don't just want to disturb there. The number of people that actually like funded, right? Then also number of repeat funders. So you fund once, then you love it, then you fund again, you love it, and all. so those were like our key performance um, indicators. So it's important that you set that earlier in the process, so you know what you're looking out for, right? So um yeah, numbers. So it could be um and from there, from these numbers. You can make um, inferences. You can make decisions to see if um, it's actually working as planned or not. So if there's things that you need to change. So for example, let's say you have high download rate, but low engagement rates with your product. So this could point to problems with the usability of your product and prompt you to investigate further. Like yeah, having a lot of sign-ups, but somehow users and the numbers of people like the vast number of people signing up are really not really engaging with product. So you could see that. Well, there might be a problem somewhere that you need to look into and look for how to solve. So it's very important to measure success. It's very important to get feedback. It's very important to track um, data, track your KPIs, and um, really be, yeah, really track your numbers. Okay. 
so um next was on um product market fit so um so product market is the number one reason why startups or products succeed so we've all heard that product market will drive startup success and that the lack thereof is what's looking behind almost every failure so for us how we determine uh product market fit is so we use a framework designed by superhuman so i don't know if you know superhuman superhuman is um yeah an ai powered um, email tool so they have this framework that is out there there's an article on it so i have the link here so i mean that's one interesting thing you don't really need to reinvent the wheel there are a lot of tools a lot of things that can help you um in your journey right so um for the product market fit they have an engine where it starts with a survey the survey has about five to six questions but the first question is like the most important one um to ask you that how would you feel if you could no longer use um superhuman right so but in our product well, in our case was we could no longer use um smart invest so from there um you would have responses like very disappointed somewhat disappointed and not disappointed so of course you know the not disappointed are not your people they are not your target audience that you know they're very disappointed these are the ones that oh they've actually said that this product actually gives um value so the number the goal is to make sure the um i think for super demand the benchmark was 40 percent right so for um users that pick very disappointed was 40 percent and once you get that 40 percent mark it shows that you to some level you've attained um product market fit and um then there are also questions that helps with audience segmentation um to find supporters and paint a picture of high expectation customers so um even amongst people that say not um that they'll be very disappointed right so it's very important to like segment the audience look at the different personas um so for us it was more of us looking at their funding numbers how much do they fund so we could now see that oh, okay on the average the um bulk of people that actually love the product are in this bracket right so we're able to segment um the audience but of course analyze feedback to see how we can convert on defense users into fanatics then um from feedback and all you can now design your roadmap right because i think one of the questions was like um how can we improve these products for you so from there you guys are able to like pull that out oh i think this would be cool this would be cool and of course you can't it's not everything you guys ask for that you would actually build right so you can just prioritize and see oh which one is which is a recurring thing from the feedback from customers and which one you can fit into your product roadmap then um yeah so build roadmap um so to run up the improvement by doubling down on what users love and addressing what holds other back then it doesn't stop there continuously continuously tracking your product market fits over time that's the most important metric so you really want to save that number of people who would um feel very disappointed if they could no longer use your product so that was what we used to track and measure um product market fit and we actually still use it because we continuously track track it so once users come on board at a certain stage in their user journey we get the survey and from there we're able to get um to get feedback so um yeah then um the next thing was now on product roadmap so it was easier because so first of all because we had ideas of some things that we really wanted to like could add to the roadmap um but also from getting feedback from users especially with our pmf survey it's actually like the primary survey that i use to like get feedback from um, users so we're able to see like recurring things things that quite a number of users are actually requesting for and um so from there we were able to like design our product roadmap right so after the mvp of course we're not stopping there because it was just the really basic features there are a lot of things that we can actually add to it so um of course start with the product vision see if some of the feedback some of the requests or things that were saying that we want that to be good is actually aligned with um, the product vision um the product goals then of course so when you get ideas you really need to review and manage um the ideas then from there define features and um, requirements and organize into releases so after um the no code oh okay i'm sure and this like after the no code um what's the code the no code mvp 
of course, from feedback we got, we we're able to like um, use that to fine tune how we built the actual product. So the actual product is actually live already, but it was easier to build because we weren't just trying to think um, think through things from the scratch. We already have something that is working. So it was just to convert that into an actual product and also add one or two things that um, we've gotten as feedback from um, users. Right. Then, um, yeah, so that's pretty much well, the, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, yeah.